Sometimes inspiration comes from the right questions and uh, thank you very much for sharing your questions with us and I'm quite sure those are the questions that all of you ladies and gentlemen will be pondering but uh, I'm very sure that the president of a country is certainly bound to discuss those uh, questions. The next speaker is the president of such a country and let me take you along a small road but still we've had the jasmine revolution, we've been talking about the tulip revolution, we are talking about the summit revolution of course uh, that was much earlier, the orange revolution we hadn't mentioned yet but I will do that now and of course there was the failed, the green revolution. We still don't know what's happening in Syria right now. We keep our fingers crossed that that will have a positive outcome for the people. But we're missing one particular plant. We're missing a beautiful flower. We're missing the rose. And with the rose revolution, we're getting into Georgia. And so that is the direct road to the president of Georgia, who has been such uh, ever since the rose revolution eight years ago. He's been re-elected in that time. Mikhail Saakashvili. I know that you've brought a number of ideas with you and we're going to listen to you. Of course, it's always an amazing thrill to be here in Warsaw. Um, it's uh, not only because of tremendous sympathy we have towards Poles and uh, 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 Polish people, Polish leadership, but also it's an amazing, uh, always encouraging and energizing experience for all of us. I think uh, when you walk today the streets of Warsaw, it's hard to imagine where Poland was just 15, 20 years ago, in fact, how desperate it looked, how hopeless and divided the situation appeared for many, many decades and even centuries for this country. And so, when you see Poland today, it's not just an important European country, but I think the presidency of this year propelled Poland to being really one of the leading countries in Europe and undoubtedly the leader of this region. The country that kills the debate whether you should enlarge or not because it is a relatively new country and it has very high economic growth and sound economic policies. The country that also understands both the challenges of modernity but also is open up to the ideas from not only to the, from the West, but from the East. I think for us it's a very, very important experience. And the experience is that if Poland could make it, I'm sure lots of us out there could make it. You know, of course, we, we are talking today um, about what happened in Tunisia, about Sidi Bouazid in Tunisia, or events in other places in North Africa, or indeed what's happening in the streets of Moscow, now in December 2011, which all reminds us that everything that seems so solid, so unshakable, and you know, that's the point, you know, the, the, when we are talking about, okay, we have to deal with these dictatorships because, you know, that's how they are. That's the reality, so we have to accept the reality and deal with them. Nothing in 21st century is more fragile than a dictatorship. Nothing in 21st century is more fragile than the need to control information. Because what the dictatorships are based on, or any authoritarian system, is that you are having a cult. Cult of personality mostly, or maybe a party. But you know, when you have openness of information, when you have internet, it's so easy to get very fast, very ridiculous.